Hi, welcome back. And if you're new, hello, my name is Tracy and welcome to my home here in Sussex, England. We're actually in the middle of a heat wave. Can you believe it? We're having summer in September, but that has not deterred me. I have got some fabulous DIYs for you this week and it's all getting ready for that full season for decorating our homes. Very little money is needed here. It's gonna be little or no money spent. I'm so pleased with how all of these turned out. So I'm gonna start with my favorite, my absolute favorite. You're gonna love this. You're gonna love it. I love it, love it, love it. I recently found this huge bag of wool in a charity shop for just 10 pounds. There's over 30 balls here. Love the color and the texture. So I definitely want to do something with this. Now this is gonna take me right back to my childhood. I have not done this in decades. So with some cardboard, it's actually an old box that I've just opened up. I've cut out donut shape rounds that I'm also going to take another little slither away and that makes advanced winding much easier. These are going to end up actually about a foot in diameter. So to start with, I am adding some string on the inside. Now I have tried doing this just with wool and it is not as strong. So definitely use some twine here, some strong string. And then I just start winding. As you wind more and more wool on, you'll find that the ball won't go through the hole. So the other thing to watch out for is make sure the string does not get tangled up. As once you're finished winding, you're going to need to tie one single knot. Now I've probably got about eight balls on here. I want these to be really quite full. So after I've tied that one knot, I'm pulling it quite tight and then I'm gonna start cutting around the edge. Now this was the first one that I did and I think I wound it really quite too tightly because it was really hard to cut. Although I've got to say these scissors aren't the sharpest in the world. So when it came to the next ones, I wound them slightly looser and that made the job so much easier. So now that you've got it all cut round, you get hold of the two pieces of string and just ease off the cardboard template and then you can use that again. Once that's removed, you want to pull it really tight. This is why I say use string and don't just use a bit of wool because if you're going really super tight on these big ones, then the wool can snap. Then I'm just gonna tie a little knot in the end and they are good to hang, but I do not want to hang them. Oh, the other thing to do is trim off any loose ones or where you've wound on a new ball of wool, there may be just the odd loose fiber. I like them quite shaggy though. Now for the next part, we're gonna head down to the field although young Bertie thinks it's a great time for a game of ball. And I'm looking for thin branches, large sticks. So they have to be quite rigid as the pom-poms are actually quite heavy. So I don't want them bending and sagging. If you didn't want to use sticks, then you could use bamboo canes. You could use curtain rods, copper piping, whatever suits your decor. Now I'm cutting these to about four feet long so I can reduce the size to fit into a vase. The hanger, I am actually gonna tuck that inside because I may want to use these again to hang them. And this is why I'm not going to use any glue. The weight of them will keep them in position on the stick or the stem as we should call it now, as it's now a flower. Now, if you saw my recent shop and haul video, you will recognize this garland. I picked up two of them from HomeSense for just $9.99 each. They're really good quality, but they are just not my colorway. 
but I didn't pass them up because I knew I could change the color. So to start with, I am gonna go in with a base coat of Annie Sloan chalk paint on Fleur. It's really quite hot when I'm doing this, so I have got some water out as well, and I'm just using a stencil brush. This is a great way to upcycle any of your old decorations, anything that is still really lovely, but you just don't like the color of it anymore. Maybe you've done really bright oranges in the past and actually you want more of a neutral palette. Now, this only took me about 20 minutes to run down this side. You can see the boy is getting a little bit bored there. I'm hanging that one up while I do the other one and then I'm gonna go in with another color. So I started off dark, this is kind of my mid-range colour and then I will use a final colour as a highlighter. Now you may be wondering why I didn't just spray paint it. Two reasons. I didn't want complete block coverage on it. And secondly, it's much more expensive. You use such little paint doing it this way. Whereas with a spray can, you will use so much paint and they're so it's so much more expensive. This is a really economical way of transforming decorations that you already have and making them suit your new scheme. I've dried lots of Annabelle hydrangeas this year. I did do a video on five different ways to dry hydrangeas, so I'll link that in the description below along with the other videos that I mentioned. Now the natural dried color is lovely, but I'd also like to enhance that. So I've pulled out spray cans from the garage, all of which will suit an autumnal theme. This is a great way of coloring up grasses and dried flowers anything you just want to highlight. So I find with this less is more. So I'm not gonna give complete coverage to the head and I'm gonna build up in little bursts and then just keep on adding quick squirts of other colors just to add that interest and that depth and variety. You can also use this technique on your existing florals, things that you just want to again revitalize, maybe change a color scheme, you don't want to go out and buy new. So this is a great way of making everything come together to coordinate. Now these sprayed heads will just live as a flower arrangement for the time being, but when I'm ready to do my new door wreath, then they will be used in that. Okay, now it's time for the P word, pumpkins. This is the whole amount of pumpkins that I own. This one is absolutely fine. It was in my recent shop and haul video and you will see it discreetly appear in my styling over the next few weeks. This one was another one that was in the shop and haul, but I'm gonna remake that. And these, there's a whole backstory to these, which I'll tell you another day. And these orange ones, 
absolutely hideous, but I know I can do something with them. So I'm going to show you a couple of techniques on how you can transform your old pumpkins, pumpkins maybe that you want to change the color of because you maybe don't want to do the orange anymore. Maybe you would like to do a different color scheme. Now I do actually own a few more and these were real pumpkins that I used last year. They were originally white. I dried them out in the bottom of the range oven, took weeks, and then I coated them with some white wax. And I've actually had these on display all year because I think they're really quite cute and quite rustic and you have to look twice to realize they're pumpkins. Okay, let's get on to this horrible little orange thing and Let's see if I can love it. So the finger protectors are on because the glue gun is coming out and I am forever burning my fingers on the glue gun. I'm going to be wrapping this little fella in raffia. So I have taken the plastic stalk out as it just makes it so much easier. And I'm wrapping the raffia round and round, putting some dabs of glue at the top and bottom. And there we go, it is wrapped. Now the little stalk is not too bad, so I'm gonna cut off the spiky bit and then just a big dollop of glue and hold that stalk on. And there we go, it is as simple as that. And now it looks rustic and it doesn't look bright orange. We're not done with the pumpkins yet, folks. We're going to use my faux stone technique on these three. Now, for the non-regular viewers, this is a great way to create a stone effect using Easy Fill, which is a joint compound, soil, cayenne pepper, and then another ingredient that I've introduced recently, which is the crushed chili seeds. Now, there is a long tutorial on this on my lamp revamp. There's also a separate one on faux stone. Again, I'll link those below. So just to quickly whiz through, we are gonna mix up the joint compound with water and then just start dolloping it on the pumpkin. Now this one was quite interesting because there was a little bit of bleed through from the orange dye on the pumpkin, which actually enhanced it. It wasn't too bad. So once you get it covered in the joint mixture, then you add on a little bit of soil and then start working in with your chili flakes. And then finally we go on with the cayenne pepper and I am putting lots and lots on. All these spices need to be added when it's wet. Don't worry if you think it's too dark, it will lighten as it dries, just leave it overnight. Hope you enjoyed that and it's given you lots of ideas and inspiration on how you can switch up your decor for the next season in a very budget friendly way. There's no need to go rushing out to the shops and spending lots of money and buying things that you just have to keep on storing. Have a look around your home, see what you can use, have a look out in the garden, in your, in your neighborhood, what's around you in nature. There's lots of ways to welcome in this new season without spending a lot of money. I'm here every week and I would love for you to join me. So please do subscribe, turn on notifications. I'm always on live chat when the next video premieres, when it first goes out. And we have people from all over the world chatting in lifetime. 
So join me next week when there'll be lots more decorating. In fact, I'm thinking about maybe doing the snug, the living room. We will see. Take care. Thank you for watching.